Hello friends, this video on control and coordination part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us look at the organization of nervous system in human beings. I mean the human nervous system, what are the different parts of the human nervous system and what are their functions. So human nervous system is divided into two classes. One is the central nervous system which is abbreviated as CNS and the other one is the peripheral nervous system that is PNS. Central nervous system consists of two important parts that is brain and spinal cord and peripheral nervous system consists of the nerves which actually connect brain and spinal cord to different parts of the body. Because only brain and spinal cord will not be able to transmit information. We need a lot of nerves to carry information from one part to another. So for that we have the peripheral nervous system. So some of the peripheral nerves of the peripheral nervous system also forms the autonomic nervous system. So autonomic nervous system is nothing but some nerves which are specialized to control some internal organs like heart, lungs, etc. So that is autonomic nervous system. So autonomic nervous system is also a part of peripheral nervous system. So broadly there are two types that is central nervous system including brain and spinal cord and peripheral nervous system including the peripheral nerves that is the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. So we will quickly discuss all these parts of the human nervous system which will make you understand things even more clearly. So let us first talk about the human brain. Brain, a very cardinal part of our body, right? Anything and everything that we do is decided by the brain. So it is the coordinating center of the body. So whatever we do, for example, let us suppose if current right now if I'm speaking. So who is telling me what I need to speak and what I need not do? It is my brain. Right? So brain, brain is the deciding organ of the body. So let us take an example. It is suppose a student is appearing for her exams. Right? So you prepare yourself for exam. So whatever you study, where, is, where does it go? It remains in your brain. Right? So when you go and appear for your exams, you read the questions and then your brain thinks searches for the answer and then you answer your paper right so there is a coordination between so many organs your eyes sees the question your hands actually help in writing the answers so the, it is a coordination between so many different organs and this coordination is brought about by brain now brain is made up of around 10,000 million neurons can you imagine the number of neurons 10,000 million as I said, neurons are the basic building block of the nervous system. So any organ which we talk about in nervous system is made up of neurons. So brain is made up of these many neurons. So it's so many neurons grouped together to form this complex structure that is brain. So here you can see so many neurons together are forming this structure. Weight around 1.3 kg. So it is not it's not very light almost one and a half kg of your weight is nothing but the weight of your brain right so any work we do brain plays a very vital role so now let us look at the structure of the human brain in little more detail what does it consist of that it functions so very well and so very efficiently now when I talk about the structure, first comes the skull. What is skull? Skull is nothing but a covering for the brain. Now since we know that brain is such a delicate organ, it performs so many important functions. So it should be kept well protected inside the body. Right? So for that we have skull. So it is a covering of the brain. It is a bony structure which ensures protection to the brain. So now since it is a bony structure, so it is quite hard, rough and tough. So even if, for example, if you, you are walking and suddenly you got hurt somewhere. So it is not going to hurt directly your brain because your brain is covered by so many other coverings outside. So which ensures a lot of protection to the brain. So this bony structure is mainly for the protection. It houses brain and sensory structures. 
So not only brain but also the sensory structures like the if you can see here this skull it actually encloses the brain which is this light pink structure other than that it encloses the ears, the eyes, the nose so everything comes in that portion. Now the skull is divided into two parts that is cranium and mandible. So we can divide the skull into these two parts. One is cranium and the other one is mandible. What is cranium? Cranium is this portion of the skull. So this entire portion is cranium, the upper portion. What is mandible? Mandible is the lower jaw part. So this part of the skull is mandible. So it is divided into two parts. Now, do you think, as I said, the skull is a bony structure. So it is made up of bones. What are bones? Bones are nothing but connective tissues. So do you think it is made up of a single bone, such a complicated structure? No, it is not. It is made up of 22 bones, so out of which 10, 8 are cranial bones and 14 are facial bones. So cranial, the word cranial is derived from the word cranium. So that means this part of the skull has 8 bones and face, facial bones. That means the bones which are present over the face. So there are 14 facial bones and 8 cranial bones. So together 22 bones. So so many bones together form this covering of the brain called skull. The next structure is meninges. What are meninges? This is again another structure which ensures protection. So these are nothing but three layers of protective tissue or membranes which cover the brain. So if you look at the brain from back side, this is how it looks like. So here if you see this outer portion, this portion is your skull. Right? But even inside skull you see there are so many different layers. Right? So what are these layers? So this is layer 1, this is layer 2 and this is layer 3. So there are three layers of protection. So these three layers are known as meninges. So what are the three layers? So this layer is known as dura mater. The middle layer is known as arachnoid. And the innermost layer is known as pia mater. So these three layers together form the meninges. Right? So the main function of the meninges is to ensure protection. Right? So that's what I told. Brain is very well protected. It is not only the skull, but even inside skull, we have three different layers. The next is the brain ventricles. What are brain ventricles? We have talked about auricles and ventricles when we were studying the structure of heart. So even brain, in brain also we have ventricles. Ventricles are nothing but fluid filled cavities in brain. Now just now I was talking about the three layers of meninges, right? Now you would have observed that between the layers something is present. I mean, this is layer 1, this is layer 2 and this is layer 3. But if you see this, this yellowish green colored something is present, right, between the layers. So what is that something? That is a fluid. So a fluid is present in the spaces between the meninges, right. So similarly, there are some cavities present in the brain which are filled with fluid. So those fluid filled cavities are known as ventricles. Now, what basically are these brain ventricles, you know, like when a lady gets pregnant, when she's about to give birth to a baby. So, when the baby is inside the womb, you would have heard about something called as neural tube. So, neural tube is something which actually develops inside the body of a, new, a pregnant woman and that neural tube gradually develops into brain ventricles in adults. So that's why you would have seen that somebody who conceives, doctors ask them to take a good amount of folic acid so that there is a good neural development, so that that neural tube develops well. So that neural tube in an embryo gradually develops into the brain ventricles in adults. So we will talk about this neural tu tube and the reproductive processes when we study the lesson on the reproduction. So there you will get more idea on this. So here, if you see, these are the brain ventricles. So here you can see these white colored structures. These are nothing but the brain ventricles. So these, there are many brain ventricles. There are two lateral ventricles. 
there is a third ventricle and a fourth ventricle. So here you can see. So how many brain ventricles we have? We have two lateral ventricles. Third ventricle and fourth ventricle. So these are the ventricles which are present. So where are these ventricles? You see here we have two lateral ventricles. Here we have another ventricle. So these are the ventricles which are present here. Now this, these brain ventricles are actually the site of production of the fluid. Just now I was telling that there is a fluid which is present in the areas inside the ventricles and there is a fluid also present between the meninges. So what is that fluid? That fluid is known as cerebrospinal fluid. Just now we will talk about that. So these ventricles are actually the areas where that fluid is produced. So we can say that these are the site of production of cerebrospinal fluid which we normally abbreviate as CSF. So which portion of the ventricle actually produces CSF? This portion, this white portion, the lowermost portion, this is known as choroid plexus and this choroid plexus produces cerebrospinal fluid. Clear? Okay. So the next one is cerebrospinal fluid itself. That is CSF. It is a fluid which fills the space between meninges and the ventricles. So you have this fluid here inside this ventricles. You also have it here between the uh, meninges. So what are the functions of the cerebrospinal fluid? Now you would have seen that whenever you pack, let us suppose you have a small gift and you have a big box to pack it. Now when you put that gift inside that bo bo box, what happens? When you pack the box, the, as you move the box, the small gift keeps rolling here and there inside the box. Right? So what do you do then? So that the, because it that gift might break when it keeps rolling here and there inside the box, sometimes it might break. So what do we generally do? We put some paper or we put some cotton and we stuff that box completely so that the small gift doesn't move here and there. So stuffing in that extra cotton or that extra paper inside the empty space of that box actually ensures protection to that small gift. So similarly here in this case, instead of keeping those spaces empty, if we fill it with some fluid, what happens? It ensures even more protection to the brain. It gives a cushion like feeling to the brain. So it is even more safe and protected. Right? So the functions of cerebrospinal fluid, the first function would be definitely protection. Right? The next is buoyancy. Brain being immersed in a fluid, the net weight is reduced. Now, we will have to quickly remember a bit about buoyancy. In your physics, you would have studied about the Archimedes principle. Right? So let us quickly look at it. So in physics, we have learned about the Archimedes principle. What does this principle say? Its principle says that whenever any object is fully or partly immersed in a liquid, what happens? Let us suppose if you have immersed a ball in water, what happens? The ball will occupy some space inside the water and that means it will displace some water, some amount of water will get displaced. So this principle says that once that object is immersed in a liquid, the weight of the object actually changes. So the apparent weight, the weight which actually appears once it is immersed in that fluid, the apparent weight becomes equal to the actual weight minus the buoyant force. That means if that object was weighing some 5 kgs, but when, when you immerse that 5 kg object inside a fluid, the apparent weight becomes 5 kg minus the bind force. That means the apparent weight is decreasing. Now why is it decreasing? Because of the bind force. What is bind force? It is an upward force which is exerted by the fluid on that object. I will not go too much into physics, but I am sure you would have learned this in your physics. If not, you can refer the physics videos for this. 
So what is buoyant force? Buoyant force is nothing but the weight of the fluid which is displaced due to immersion of that object. Now similarly in this case, the brain, brain is that object. And what is the fluid? Fluid is the cerebrospinal fluid. Now if we immerse the brain in the cerebrospinal fluid, so the apparent weight of the brain is reduced. So that is an advantage, right? So the body doesn't have to bear a very heavy brain. So at least the weight is getting reduced to some extent. So because of that buoyancy, the net weight of the brain is also getting reduced. Next is excretion. Now the cerebrospinal fluid which is flowing here as you can see, they finally get into the blood. Now flowing, the flow of cerebrospinal fluid into blood is unidirectional. That means only the cerebrospinal fluid gets into the blood. Blood doesn't come back to cerebrospinal fluid. So that is the advantage. Since it is a one direction flow, so whatever waste materials are present here in the brain, the cerebrospinal fluid takes away the waste materials and put them into the blood. Clear? So these are some of the important properties or functions of the cerebrospinal fluid. So now what did we see in the structure of brain? We saw that brain is highly protected by so many things. First is the bony structure skull. Inside the skull we have three different layers that is the three meninges. In between the meninges there are some empty spaces which is filled with a fluid called cerebrospinal fluid. And there are some cavities inside the brain which actually produce the cerebrospinal fluid. So these cavities are called the brain ventricles. Right? So this is roughly the structure of the brain as far as the protection of the brain is concerned. So now we will also talk about the internal structure of the brain. I mean what are the different parts of the brain and how do they function? Which parts of the brain? This was all about how do we ensure that the brain is well protected inside our body? Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.